All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Welcome everybody back. And uh, today you will be getting the official Treyarch Zombies map streamer tier list. So, actually, you know what? I think, you know, I th you know hold on, we're going to lose the music for now. Just for now, just for now, so I can think about this. So, basically, these have kind of come back recently. Um, and I figured, you know what? I haven't made a tier list, not, not even just a tier list itself. I haven't made a video on this in a while. So, um, yeah. We're only doing Treyarch right now, and I'm also going to be... So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through them in order, and I'm going to sort of explain my reasoning for ranking them. Yeah, my outdated list is going to be changing right now. So let's uh, let's let's do this. Let's do this, shall we? Treyarch's going to re repost this, bruh. All right, so here we go. Um, DE. Well, so yeah, we'll, we'll start with... We're just going to go in the list, so we'll start with DE. Um, well, we're about to watch the freaking video. We're going to launch that later, but... Dreisendrock is easily, I would say that DE is ultimately the formula of like what a modern zombies map is. Cause it's like the way I've always seen it is to me, DE is like, again, it's the most like cookie cutter, cookie cutter formula that works for zombies. It doesn't take any like insane risks. I don't think it doesn't take any insane risks. And sometimes the biggest takeaway or the, the, the biggest thing that takes away from DE is the fact that um, it can be a little bit repetitive, I think. Like, it it has a formula, and, and you always play the formula in the meta. So, that like, in that sense, it can kind of degrade replayability, maybe. But I, I think I'm going to have to give it S tier. It, 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 again, it's like... It almost... It does almost nothing wrong. Nothing at all. It, it hits everything correctly. Um, and I... There's... We're probably going to watch a more in-depth explanation, but I would say fundamentally that's where DE has to sit because it, it is it is the fundamental formula. Um, all right, now we got Garad. So GK is I, I uh, this one's hard to rank, and in my opinion, GK can vary depend on whether you're playing it solo or co-op. I think they're two totally different experiences. So I'm gonna because I am more of a solo player. I think I'm gonna rank for solo, and this might not reflect your your guys' experiences. Whether you know you're generally more of a co-op player or a solo, um, but I would say as far as solo is concerned, Garad Krovi is probably God. GK may have one of it, it may have one of the greatest boss fights in Zombies history. Um, close to Voyage is a, is a close second. But we'll get to that later. I'd say solo GK is A tier. I'd say I, I'd say it, it could be a little like there's a few things that I would change for solo play to make it truly S tier. But I think I think all in all GK solo is A tier. Um, so yeah, it's um again it's kind of it's still almost rides the same formula as DE, but it doesn't have as many logic puzzles built into the into the Easter egg exactly. They're pretty much all. They're they're all pretty much gameplay challenge, which is fine. You know, I'd actually prefer that to only logic puzzles, but yeah, it's um, it's almost got the balance right. Um, transit, guys, listen, listen. Took risks for its time, was very epic just to play. Objectively speaking, is it a well designed map? No. Let's be on chat. Let's be honest with ourselves. An ob. An, when you're looking at it from an objective design standpoint, the map can be fun, but still designed like poo poo. This is not reflecting on how much fun I have on transit. Objectively speaking, it's I'm gonna give it E tier, and the reason I'm not giving it completely bottom. Um, the things that it did bring to the table at the time for zombies were good for it. It it, it fundamentally laid the groundwork for the rest of. I would actually say transit in a lot of ways left the groundwork for Bo3, but that's my opinion. Um, isn't that just Diner from Blackout? I hate you. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to give Trends the E tier. Um, all right. Ancient Evil. Ancient Evil. <sighs> In my opinion, probably the best of the Chaos maps. The map is incredibly unique. Um, ga uh, from a gameplay perspective, it's, it's all very well thought out. The Easter egg has... This is... Okay. This is what I find interesting about Ancient Evil. DE set set the precedent where you have a map that has four wonder weapons, but to do the Easter egg, you're not required to do all of them. Ancient Evil, you're required to do all of them except Gaia, I think. It's kind of weird. But 
they still it's the gameplay still fundamentally requires you to do all of them that's okay and i would say that the upgrades are easy and simple enough where it actually feels like you're still doing the main quest it doesn't detract from that at all it doesn't feel annoying the upgrades are super simple and you feel like you're doing a lot oh yeah sorry you need gaia my bad but you don't need to upgrade gaia um but yeah and then the here's what i will say is the the boss fight on this map unfortunately is not it's not very well thought out last some of you guys were here for it last time i played this map this boss fight you essentially lose areas to play as it goes on without anything really added to it you just lose spaces to play in and that doesn't seem very good for gameplay to me the boss fight is not that engaging it's kind of boring and it could have been better um and also it has yo kiss so i, I have to give it brownie points for that but ancient evil um i'm gonna all in all i'm gonna give it a tier i will give it a tier so yeah I, I i would maybe put ancient evil s tier if its boss fight was a bit better but yeah that that's if it had voyages boss fight is what i'm saying i guess i would leave it there it's not a very fun boss fight honestly it's just not that good uh okay now we got ascension first easter egg um ever probably the birthplace of many people's high rounds uh or or what would be high rounds um you have to judge ascension for what it is you got to put it in a bubble because you can't really compare it to maps like this that's part of me thinks that these kind of these kind of tier lists are fatally flawed because i can't compare i'm not leaving nc but i can't compare a map like nocturne toten with dead of the night they're just not this they're fundamentally different games but that aside i'm gonna put ascension in a bubble but for what it has to offer to the player i think I think A tier is, is accurate. A tier is accurate. Um, it has enough to do for p players that dig deep enough where they can do a, a little bit of a quest to get them interested in Easter eggs. High rounds have many viable strats that can be played. And the progression in Ascension just feels good. It just feels good. Progressing through Ascension is something that always has felt good. So I'm going to give it I'm gonna give it A tier. Uh, Blood of the Dead, literally fresh off of playing this map. It's very flawed. It's very, very flawed. I'm I'm not going to include anything storyline related. I'm just trying to only focus in on objective design standpoints. Oh, boy. Blood of the Dead is a mess. It really is. It ha Blood of the Dead has a lot of crap with a few really nice gems in the Easter egg. There's a few really nice gems in the Easter egg, but it is very, very flawed. You have to get through a lot of just utter garbage to get to the good stuff. Um, so I'm not going to qu quite drop it down to F tier. Um, I think I'm going to give it E tier. It's pretty bad. It's pr I, I literally have just played through it, all of it. Did the Easter egg entirely. It's it's pretty bad. Very fatally flawed. Um, so yeah, I would give it E tier. If we're, if we're judging with storyline as well, I'm giving, I would bump it up, but I'm only looking at map design right now. Buried. Um... This is, Buried is interesting. Again, I don't think I can really compare Buried to some other ones. What Buried does is, it provides more of a sandbox to zombies than we've ever seen. Now, here's the thing. When you provide a sandbox to zombies, I think you get rid of the, you get rid of what something like Mob of the Dead does really much, like a really tight narrative, you know? And I, I don't mean in a storyline perspective. I just mean like just generally. Can I, can, wait, can I, like, open this up more? Oh, presentation mode? Oh, that's a little bit better. Okay. All right, that, yeah, that's good. Sorry. Sorry, we're, we're just, we're making it look more streamer right now. Um, so, yeah, when you have a map that's very sandboxy, like, buried, where you can basically put anything wherever you want, kind of like what BO4 did in a way with its perk system, but just, just generally with everything else the, the map has to offer, you lose what becomes a tight narrative experience, and that's, you know, that's part of the sacrifice for it. But the sandbox is very creative and 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 buried. So um with its Easter egg in mind, with high rounds in mind, with just general design in mind, I'm gonna give buried A tier. Buried is buried is mm, actually no. Yeah, no, no, I'm happy to leave it at A tier. Call of the Dead. This is Okay, you know what I like about Call of the Dead? You know what I like about Call of the Dead? I'll be honest. Call of the Dead has 
what I think is the formula moving forward for zombies. Because it has a co-op version of an Easter egg that is very substantial. It's difficult to do with people. And it has a solo version of that Easter egg. Not quite as in-depth or substantial, but you can have both... You can have two different experiences, fundamentally, depending on how many people you're, you're playing with. So, that's something I really like about Call of the Dead. And it's pretty much one of the only maps to ever really do that. Some maps are co-op only, or they're solo only, or they're just an easter egg and you can do them solo or co-op, and it's not really made for either of them, but Call of the Dead's a little different. Um, hmm. I think I'm going to... Mm, let me think. I, I would say the map has a few fatal flaws. George's is debatable, but I think it's overall a, po a net positive to the map. Um, high rounds... Actually, I would just say the map generally flattens out, unfortunately, as far as difficulty at a pretty early round. Um, at a pretty early round, the map kind of flatlines, especially if you've already done the Easter egg. So... With Easter egg in mind, with this in mind, I'm going to give Call of the Dead B tier. Yeah, I think I have to give it B tier. Great map, great map. It has a, it's it's a very basic version of the formula that we really like. Uh, okay, now we got Duris. Hmm, Duris. Where do I put you? I'm gonna consider this Duris and the Giant. Duris, Duris and the Giant. So, it's hard to rank, man. I would like to actually split these. I actually, I have to pick one. Okay, let's just say Duris. I'm not gonna include the Giant. Because I'd actually rank those differently. Duris and World at War and Black Ops 1. Um, I would say what they did is... It may have been one of the most revolutionary maps of all time. Even even to this day. This this is where I feel like Zombies wasn't afraid to take risks. And just throw things in. Um, and lucky for Duris, they all landed. However, they didn't just throw things in with Duris. Because when you look at the map structure. And the way that you progress through the map. It's all very well thought out. Um, it's simple enough where it's, uh, it's inviting for anybody to play. It's very inviting, and the, the premise is super straightforward. There's, and there's, there's multiple ways that Duris can be viably played, which I really like. There's something to offer for everybody. Mm. It's very unique for the time. So, uh, I'm gonna give Duris A tier. I'm gonna give it A tier. Duris is a very, very solid experience. Okay, we got Dire Eyes. Johnny J, I hope you're listening. Eat your heart out, pal. Dire Eyes is not it. It is, again, I think I think Johnny J is... is. Here's what I think, chat. I think Johnny J... I, I've explained this before. I think he is a zombies flat earther. Where he, where he doesn't actually think Dire Eyes is the best map. S -s like, like, flat earthers don't actually think the earth is flat. But they just want people to think they think that... So they can get other people to believe it because it's kind of like a meme or something. I think Johnny J is a Dyrise flat earther. So with that being said, Dyrise is basically the epitome of Jimmy Zelensky's chaotic mind. That's what comes out of this. The map doesn't have much real structure. It doesn't have a very tight narrative like like Blood of the Dead and or Mob of the Dead. And that's fine. You can what I like about these more chaotic Jimmy Zelensky maps is. They have almost infinite replayability because you don't have to play it the same way every time. And the game doesn't force you to do so. Diaries, I would argue, can have more replayability than something like Mob of the Dead. But I think I think given its Easter egg, it could have a tighter narrative if that's what they're really going for. So I'm going to go with... I'm going to put Diaries at E tier. Again, I haven't put anything bottom yet. I don't think anything actually yet belongs bottom. Dead of the night. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Dead of the night. Never mind. Okay, F tier. I'm just, I'm just playing. Uh, maybe. Uh, Dead of the night. Don't like this map a whole lot. I don't know why it is. Again, it's hard to be objective about it because this came out at a point in my life where I was just not in a good place and I hated Dead of the Night for it. But when I look at the map objectively, it, it does a few unique things. But... Um, I, I would say the fatal flaw in Dead of the Night is that it completely loses the spirit of zombies. What Dead of the Night turns into is like a, I don't know exactly the genre, but it, it, 
it's like a quest based hmm it's like a quest based scavenger hunt with zombies just thrown in between you know like you could play dead of the night without zombies and still kind of you know what, like you know what i mean like you could play dead of the night and just go out and go do the things gather all the things and build all the stuff and not have zombies and you virtually get the same effect um the boss fight's kind of interesting but really not that cool it, i don't know it just feels like it just feels like zombies aren't even meant to be there i don't know i i don't i don't really like that again if you want to play like a, a, a like a like a quest based scavenger game that's fine playing call of duty zombies for me is not it so dead of the night it it it, it tried but i don't think it got there <sighs> i'll get mm. There's no way I'm putting Dead Knight over, blo over Blood of Dead in Transit. I'm giving it E tier. You don't need ammo to survive. <laughs> I'm giving it E tier. Yeah, it's a survival game minus the fun. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Not even a survival game. It's a, it's like a mystery game minus the fun. I, I just... The zombies could not be there and you get the same effect. And I, I don't... It's like, what's the point then, you know? Why am I playing zombies? All right, five. Um, Five is the... Is the hardcore brother to Kino Der Toten. And Pat laid this out really nicely in his video. And I've always felt that way with 5. It was kind of like... 5 was a badge of honor if you could play it well back in the day. Um, but I still think it has a lot of flaws. 5 is nowhere near the top of the list. But what it does offer in terms of... Um, what it offers in terms of learning zombies I think is... Cannot be understated. Five will help you learn the game, I think. Even even more streamlined and faster than Kino will. Because five punishes mistakes way harder than Kino. So you might not like five because it's brutal, but I think it helps you I think it helps learn. I think it's I think it's a pretty good like moderate to beginner map. But it could be made a lot better, so I'm gonna give it C tier. It's alright. It's okay. Um now we got nine. Okay. This is gonna be controversial. I think I might be one of the only individuals that doesn't really like nine that much. I I think to me nine just felt uninspired, kinda of boring, and generic. Um I, I it it also felt to me not not quite as much as Dead of the Night, but in some sense it felt like the zombies couldn't didn't even need to be there and we could have done the same thing. The Easter egg steps are, I, what I will say about nine, the Easter egg steps are actually pretty well thought out. Most of them are. They're pretty well thought out. And the boss fight is hella interesting. The boss fight on nine is hella interesting. But here's the problem with nine. If you're not doing the quest, it seems to me that there's not much fun to be had. It has an amazing boss fight. Pretty good Easter egg steps. But all in all, I, I don't love it. I think it's... They played it very, they put almost too safe. It, I, I don't know. It just feels like, hmm. It, oh God, it just seems like, it seems like they wanted, what they wanted was, was not what came out. I don't know. What they wanted was not what ended up happening. But, I mean, that has a few gems in it for sure. I'm going to give nine B tier. I think it's very generic. I think it's okay. Uh, it's not It's not a bad map by any means. I just don't love it. So I'm going to give it B tier. Kino to Toten. Um, let's remove nostalgia factor entirely. Let's completely strip that down. Kino is in the wrong game. Kino is a game that is stuck in the past. In the wrong game. Kino is a World at War map stuck in Black Ops 1. Um, however... However, it's not a bad zombies experience. I think what zombies is, as a as just a, a, a survival experience, Kino does that quite well. It, now, unfortunately, it doesn't offer anything more really than than Doris, to be quite honest. And that's what I'm saying is like it's stuck in the wrong game. Um. So, when you look at it, I don't know. Try to look at it as, as objectively as possible. I'm going to put it a tier under Duris because it's basically Duris. I'm going to give it a B tier because it's basically Duris without anything new. Just laid out 
relatively differently. I'm going to give it B tier. Again, it's a great survival experience, but that's what it is. I'll say B tier. Um, it's good. It's good enough. Uh, okay, we got Moon. Hmm. I would actually... Now, I would actually rank BO1 and BO3 Moon differently. And if if we're going... Okay, the picture shows BO1 Moon. I don't know, chat. Do we rank BO1 Moon? Um, We'll say BO1 Moon. Let's, let's see. Again, this is kind of like Jimmy's chaotic mind again. However, what I will say as well is Moon seems to have more of a fair structure as far as like like narrative of a game, narrative of a gameplay, then it could have. Moon is fatally flawed in a few ways, namely its layout. Um, the moon layout is is needs a lot of work. It has in, very interesting locations, however. The Easter egg is pretty unique. The steps are mostly well thought out, and they're all pretty easy to repeat and, and, and to do. And you get, a, you get a really good payoff at the end as well. Um... I would say with a better layout, I would put Moon either A or S tier, but it struggles a little bit in that department, and it can get a little bit cliche in in many cases. So I'm going to give Moon B tier as well. I'm going to say also Moon B tier. Too much RNG B tier for me. I'm not going to include RNG in that. I don't think it's exactly a fair rating. I'm saying from a gameplay perspective, assuming everything's are wor assuming everything is working properly. And you get what you need to do all the experiences in the map. I'm going to say it's B tier. If it was laid out better, it would easily be higher. Um, okay, Mob of the Dead. So, again, this is what I explained earlier. Is this the list? No, not the one you're thinking of. This is the opposite of what I explained about Buried. Whereas Buried is a sandbox of a map. Where you can really go and do and set up the game any way you want to. What you sacrifice is a very, like, tight experience. Where Mob of the Dead has... One way to really play the map, but the way to play the map is extremely well designed. The way they have mob, the way they have you progress through the map, it leaves enough room for creativity, but it leaves enough room for creativity, but it keeps you on the rails just enough where you everything you do in Mob of the Dead feels meaningful. Everything in Mob feels like meaningful progression, whether it's turning on an afterlife box, whether it's grabbing a plane part. It makes every action feel great. And you can only get that when you have a like a very well-crafted narrative like Mob of the Dead. I, I don't mean crafted narrative from a story standpoint. I mean from a gameplay progression standpoint. It's very well thought out and, are, and very carefully articulated. That's the Jason Blundell style. I'm going to give Mob of the Dead... I'm going to give it S tier. I'm going to give it S tier. Especially at its time. The, the fact they were able to pull that off. Basically, Jason's first map at the hall. I think I'm going to give it S tier. Now, here's, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mob of the Dead could easily be A tier. Here's the problem. Is the Easter egg is not very substantial because of that very tight narrative. If the Easter egg... If they were able to maintain that very tight experience, but with more substance... It would solidify S tier. But if there was a tier between these two, I'd probably leave it there. However, I will, I'll will i be satisfied with S. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Nocturne Toten. Chat. This has to be on its own plane. You can't... I'm going to try my best. But you cannot compare Nocturne Toten to any of these maps. It's fundamental. The only thing I think you could really compare it to is any of the other World of War ones. But Nocturne Toten... I'm actually going to rank this higher than I think a lot of you guys are, are going to think. The effect of Nocturne Toten playing it on World at War or Black Ops 1, I think is where it's played best. BO3 Noct, I'd rank F tier. BO3 Noct sucks, I think. But World at War, especially in BO1 Noct, what it, 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 it really goes a long way in, in making you feel like vulnerable. And it, it goes a long way, yeah, making you feel vulnerable. And really stripping you down to the bare minimum, but giving you giving you the tools to you know get as great as possible. Now, again, not a lot to offer. It's just like it's whatever. But I'm gonna say Noct is, but again, that experience that it does have to offer you on those particular games. I'm gonna say C tier. I'm gonna say C tier. You can play through Noct once and be like, okay, did the thing. But yeah, 
again, you can't discount it, its experience entirely. You can't say Noct is a bad map because it doesn't have Easter eggs. It's not how that works. Um, Origins. Okay, so again. Huh. <clears throat> what? I, okay, here's what I have to say about Origins. Hmm. Origins has what I consider to be the best blend of chaotic gameplay with the Jason Blundell crafted narrative. It's the perfect blend. Now, the Origins does have a... Here, here's another thing. You have to keep this in mind. Origins plays unbelievably differently solo versus co-op. And again, I'm kind of ranking these for solo, but... I, I'm gonna put co-op in in the component of this. It plays it plays completely different. We all know Origins. Origins is easily one of the most well designed and well thought out maps of all time. Somewhat tedious for solo players, and again, that's it's because the map was not designed to be played solo, and that's fine. You have to keep that in mind. But the experience that Origins has to offer when played through completely. When, when all of its components are utilized and exhausted, I guess, it's an experience like no other. You'll literally never forget your, your first time playing through the Origins Easter Egg and doing everything. Upgrading the staffs, while I don't love every element of them, they all feel meaningful to do. I'm going to say Origins is S tier. I don't, I don't think many people are going to complain about that. So yeah, that's fair rating, I think. Uh, we'll, leave it th we'll leave it there. Revelations. Tough one to rank, honestly. Tough one to rank. This is a weird map, I, th I feel like. It falls somewhere in this kind of strange middle ground. Um, Revelations is confusing, you know? It's confusing. I I often feel Rev... Or, I, like, I play Rev, and I often feel like I don't know how to feel, you know? The problem is this doesn't have as well of a crafted narrative like Mob, for example. And it doesn't really have the sandbox gameplay like like Buried. You know what I mean? It doesn't have that that sort of open-ended gameplay. It falls somewhere in this really dirty middle ground. And I never know how to feel while playing it. And I think a lot of that has to do with the blend of all the other maps. And because all those other maps are from other experiences, you kind of getting just this brown in the middle. However, Revelations does a few neat things with with having a secondary boss fight before the main one. However, the main boss fight is pretty generic and underwhelming. As well as... I mean, and the first the first bo boss fight is oddly cooler than the second one. But that aside, the ending... The, the second half of Revelations is cool. High Rounds is an also extremely boring map. Also, also, I just thought of this. Revelations may as well be the framework for a Black Ops 4 map. This may as well be a BO4 map. When you think about it, you have mostly the same tools. You have an incredible amount of wonder weapons. You have specialists. Um, you have little arnies. You have a zombie shield. You have a lot of safety nets that we were to see in BO4. It feels like the framework to me for a Black Ops 4 map. It, it, it definitely feels like the framework. So it's like they were testing. It's like they were testing BO4 mechanics in this map. And I, th I think that's true. So... That being said, because I don't know really how to feel in playing Revelations, I'm going to say it's B tier. <sighs> I'm going to say it's B tier. It's it's pretty good, but you know, it it's 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 a weird one, man. It's a weird one. D line said uh Chopper after this could we raid Zed after this. He's in the last 3 hours of 24-hour non-stop zombie shift. Dang, dude, that's crazy. If he's still going, man, uh we got to finish this and we we'll, and then we also got to go uh lounge. But yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh let's see what's next. Thank you for the biddies. Shangri-La. B is a good rating? I think so, too. I think that's fair. Um, Shangri-La. Really, really good map, in my opinion. But also fatally flawed. I, I think what Shang does best, in my opinion, is... It makes you feel uncomfortable. You know? Shang is really good at making you feel uncomfortable. But at the same time, is that the best feeling to have while playing zombies? I don't know. Um... It's Easter egg is fairly unique. All of the steps are again, this is one of the, this is another one because it's um 
This is a co-op only Easter egg, so you cannot judge us based on solo. So you, to to play through its entire experience requires a fair amount of communication, but the steps also reward that, I would say. The steps reward a well-coordinated team. Um, that's just the way that they're designed. A lot of the peripherals around the way that they're set up, I think, are kind of dumb, to be honest. I don't really like the idea of not knowing when a special zombie is going to spawn when you need it for a certain thing. And it's like, eh. Um, but Shangri-La makes you feel perpetually uncomfortable. And I think there's a time and place for that. But it sticks. I think it overstates its welcome in Shang, and that's its biggest flaw. I think that's its biggest flaw. And I think I'm going to have to rate Shang B tier. Now, the good thing that has going for it is... It's got the highest barrier to entry. So veteran zombie players are going to really like this map. They're going to really, really like this map. And Shangri-La also feels really good when you get into a groove of like high rounds, for example, and you know what you're doing and you're executing it right. Shangri-La feels... It it's so rewarding. It feels really good. So... Yeah, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna give it B tier. Pretty pretty dang good map, but it's got it's got a lot of flaws. Uh Shinonuma. Kind of the Dury's formula, but not quite as fleshed out. Um But innovative enough. Now here's the problem with Shinonuma is I feel like I feel like it's kind of forgettable. You know? I feel like it's a little bit forgettable. And while I think while I think it has kind of a lot to offer, many of the things that it tried to do just didn't really land. Um, it has a lot of useless mechanics. But it did bring dog zombies to the table. And obviously, there's no Easter eggs. You can't really rank it there. It's hard to rank for sure. I'm going to say C tier. I'll say it around C tier. It's, it's all right, you know. It's all right. Um... Yeah, I don't know. Not much to say about Shinonuma. Again, that's why I'm giving she that's why I'm giving a C tier. Not much to say about it. It just it is what it is. Shadows of Evil, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Here's where here's where I'm about to here's where I'm about to talk about it. I'm leaving it here. Shadows of Evil is going instantly in S tier. I've explained this before, but it seems to me that Shadows of Evil was the it was the it was the map. It was oh God, how do I put it, man? How do, I think Pat said it best when he said it was Treyarch's Mona Lisa. This was, like, the biggest flex that Treyarch could have done. Like, it's like... Now, Shadow's not perfect, and I'll explain some flaws. It's not perfect. No zombies map's perfect, and none will be. But... Shadow's does two things simultaneously. Shadow's has the... The, the greatest gameplay narrative when I, I mean that in like the mob of the dead way where it's like the progression through the map is very streamlined it is it's very streamlined when you get into certain and areas and stuff but within that within that sphere you can choose to play that any way you want what's nice is that you can be very creative with the beast modes and 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 changing them of which which pedestal you're using and, and what areas are going to open you can be extremely creative about it um Shadows leave so much room for creativity without destroying that narrative. Um, the attention to detail in the map is also unbelievable. And I, I would say it's a map that really never gets old to play. We, I think we as a community grew into Shadows of Evil. And again, I say this all the time. Shadows didn't age well. I think we did. I think it was that. Shadows was always how it is. Maybe some updates here and there. But we aged into Shadows of Evil. So it was it was what defined the formula for BO3 going forward, really, along with DE. But yeah, um that's that's certainly what it did for sure. I would say that Sh Shadows of Evil has the it has the gameplay of Mo Mob of the Dead while having the creativity and free reign of origins. That's what it seems to me. Um, yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a wonderful map. I think it's a wonderful map. It's got, it's got to be my favorite. It's got to be S tier, easily. Uh, Verrucked. Mm, 
basic but fun. Basic but fun. Um, I think Ver I think people rate Verruckt lower than it should be. Honestly, Verruckt is meant to be brutal. It is. Now the question is: is is it fair brutal? That's a good question. Is the brutal necessary on this map? Is it well thought out? That's a great question. I would say that Verrucht did Verrucht was able to achieve the atmosphere and and pace of gameplay that it wanted, but it may have went a little overboard in some cases and didn't seem to offer as much variety to survive that brutalness. Because as we're like a map like Mob of the Dead, Mob is a hard map when you look at it objectively. It's like a hard map progressing through it. But you also get to a point where you get like a sick wonder weapon and you just, you know, you get way ahead in the game, so to speak. Um, Varuk doesn't really do that. You're kind of always just battered down, which again is kind of the point, but it's all right. I, I don't know. C tier, I guess. It's it's a good map, you know? It's pretty average. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. Void to Despair. Ladies and gentlemen, God, don't you want to talk about this one? Okay. I'm going to rank Voyage, and you're not going to like it. Um, I think one of the biggest problems with Voyage for me was that it was disappointing. Voyage, uh, okay, and, and, and here's one thing where it's like you can't say the YouTubers ruined the map because... I was the biggest Voyage fanboy before it came out. I was the biggest Voyage fanboy before it came out. We were at the we were at the at the Black Ops 4 reveal in California, and I literally watched the trailer for the first time, and I'm like, lads, this is Shadows of Evil 2.0. The way it looked to me was that Voyage was gonna be sh what Shadows was, what it was able to capture, but but more, you know? And it didn't really do that. What, what Voyage ends up being is a bland, confusing, elaborate, and artificial mess. Here's the saving grace of Voyage. The, the Voyage... The Voyage boss fight is probably one of the most interesting boss fights I've ever seen. I absolutely love it. I absolutely love the Voyage boss fight. The problem, I would love to play it more, but the problem is I I cannot be bothered to play the Voyage Easter egg to get there. It's so, it it just, it's such a turnoff, man. It's such a turnoff. Um, the quest of Voyage is fairly cookie cutter. Um, what, what I don't like is it, it leaned a lot into what I think Dead of the Night did wrong, where it becomes... It becomes too folk. Okay, here, here, here's what, here's what I think. Voyage. A lot of the steps require you to pay attention to like a lot of little details. You know, you gotta go find this little planet symbol. You gotta go find this little spark on the wall. You know, you gotta go find this little thing hidden in a room. You know what I mean? You gotta go find a little planet. You're so focused on the little details of this map that you do not take in the greater atmosphere around you. You know, I think I think. That's one of the greatest flaws in it is you're so focused on doing little annoying artificial tasks that your mind is not even able to take in the atmosphere around you. You don't feel like you're really on a ship half the time, and you certainly don't feel like you're on the Titanic. It feels stationary. It feels very custom map as far as its atmosphere, and yeah, I just I, it's one of the most miserable maps to play in my opinion. It's it's it leans too far into being quest based, and again doesn't really feel like a zombies map. It doesn't feel like a survival map. No, it's not a survival map, but it doesn't feel like it is. Um, I'm gonna give Voyage because it has a okay. I would have given it E tier, but because of its wonderful boss fight, it's gonna go D tier. Again, not not its huge saving grace, but. Yeah, I'm going to give it D tier. It's got a better... It certainly has got a better boss fight than Dead of the Night. Quests are about on par. I don't know. I think D tier is about right. Uh, Zetsubo. 
Okay, final map here, on at least on this list. Um, I'm going to give Zetsubonoshima... Actually, here, before I rank it, I'll explain. I'm not giving it F tier. Hold on. <clears throat> now, I'm separating... Because, okay, a lot of people rank Zetsubo low because of its glitches. You can't do that. You have to separate that. Why? Because that's not what the map was built on. I'm assuming all of these maps are working as intended. That being said with Zetsubo, the point, okay, if you play, what I've noticed is if you play Zetsubo no Shima with no gum, with no gumballs and with, with nothing else really, um, the map is meant for, to starve you of resources. And that's kind of a cool idea. That's kind of a cool idea. It's very like, it's very World at War-esque kind of Nocturne Tony, you know? Um, it starves you of resources. And that can be broken a little bit with Mega Gumballs, of course. So that's where I think that's a bit of a problem. But Zetsubo also features... It features many creative ways that you can play the map to get things done as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, and it rewards you for doing that. It rewards efficient players, which is kind of nice. Um, that being said, I, I, I don't love some of the features. The boss zombies are not very intuitive. Here's the problem with the, my... Thrashers, I don't really like, and I'll explain why. It's not because they can one-hit you, and it's not because they're just kind of boring or whatever. It's because, like... Okay, for example, if you're fighting a panzer, when it's about to throw out an attack, you get an indicator of what happens before, you know? Like, you can kind of know when, like, the, the claws come out to grab you, or you get an indicator of the fire before that happens, or, it, you know, you can kind of respond to it a bit more what it's doing. Thrashers kind of spawn out of nowhere. The, the the way that they appear on the map is not very clear. It's not clear exactly when they can strike. And it's not clear what attack they're doing. So I don't really love them so much. Um, the specialist weapon here is pretty cool. I'll be honest. I, I like the skull a lot. It's nice. Um, yo, Powerless. What's up, dude? Thank you for the two months. Appreciate the lot, my man. Welcome back. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Job, you should honestly upload this as a YouTube video. I will be, Reeds. I will be. Thank you so much, Pyrolus. Appreciate the two months, my man. Yeah, I'm getting so much into this tier list, guys. Um, so, yeah, uh, again, back on track. Special weapon, very cool. Um, <clears throat> boss fight is questionable. Boss fight is not really a boss fight, I would say. You get in there, you get in a room, you, you shoot some zombies, and I don't know. The boss doesn't feel like it's a, much of a presence, you know? It kind of just throws its arm down. And that's about it. It's it's a boss fight, but not really. Um, I would say that it would be better if maybe the bars were down and you actually fought Takio himself a little bit. If he had more free reign and he can move around. And there was attacks that he would throw out and you get an indicator of it. And then you have to avoid it somehow, you know? It's a little more, a little more intricate gameplay. I don't think Zetsubo gets there. And that's one of its biggest weaknesses. Um, that and also... The map doesn't have much to offer once. The map doesn't have much to offer, I think, once you have, you have, um, actually, I don't know if I would say that. Never mind. I don't know if I would say that. The, the, hmm. How do I want to put that? The map flatlines. So, like, you imagine you're playing Zetsubo. You're opening up the bunkers. You're doing all the things. You're getting rewarded in the process in the meantime. You know, you're micromanaging all your plants. You get rewarded with a big spider mid-boss fight, you know, to spice things up a little bit. That's pretty cool. It's like you get into the monotony of doing the water and everything and turning on dumb stuff. Then you get this big epic spider boss fight, and that's like a spark. And it's like, we're back in it. You do a few more steps, a little more monotonous things, back to real boss fight. And that's really cool. Um, so I actually really like that about Zetsubo. But... I think its map layout could be better, and I think some of the steps could be designed better. But, all in all, I am going to give Zetsubo a hot B tier. Pretty good. If it had a if it had a really good boss fight, I would say it'd be A tier, actually, to be honest. But, we didn't know how spoiled we were in BO3, and Zetsubo is the epitome of that. But, I'm going to give it B tier. I'm going to give it B tier. It's It's... And, and actually, high rounds are, are quite interesting. How is it better than Verruckt? I think it might be. 
Again, they're not really comparable, but I don't know. They're not exactly comparable. What about Alpha? Oh, yeah, it doesn't have Alpha Omega and Dr. Toten. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, well, I, I guess we'll just put them on screen in the video or something. But Alpha Omega, I'm going to rank very low. Because, okay, here here's my problem with Alpha Omega. So, so, so you imagine, did we rank Nuketown? No, we didn't. Nuketown's not on here. Um... Yeah, okay, Nuketown's on here. Okay, let's say BO2 Nuketown is going to go... I would actually give it A tier. I would give it A tier. Um, use the list of Timad, he has them all. I'll just, I'll just add the pictures in. Um, it's fine. Because there's only a few more. I would actually give that A tier. Uh, Powerless, thank you for the 500 bits, man. Appreciate that a lot, my dude. Thank you, thank you so much. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, brother. Powerless, you're a legend, man. Thank you, dude. That means a lot. Um, yeah, I would give Nuketown on BO2 A tier. Now, the reason being, the reason being, Nuketown captures what it's supposed to be. Nuketown captures the heart of what Nuketown is. It's uh it's a it's a chaotic, not exactly clustered, but <clears throat> sorry, my voice is starting to go. I need some water. Nuketown is like what it's supposed to be. It's 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 small but simple, yet extremely chaotic, and it's very punishing. And I kind of like that. I really do. Yo, Powerless Rook just gifted a sub to Reeds. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. Appreciate that, Powerless. Thank you, man. Chat, where are we at actually right now? We are seven subs away from 1340. I appreciate it a lot, guys. Thank you very much. Um. So, yeah. I would say Nuketown was... It was a great experience for what it is. They did it well, man. It's good. I think Newtown is just fundamentally solid. <clears throat> so, uh, I would rank Newtown A tier. Alpha Omega? Not the case. I don't think that... And this is kind of what scares me for Cold War. But... That aside, we'll get to that later. Um, Alpha Omega, I think here's the problem. It... You, you cannot just take a classic map... Like a, and this is kind of where BO4 did not, didn't do so well either. You cannot take a classic layout and experience of a map and simply slap more onto it and expect it to be just as good as the original and more. That's not how that works. Just if, if you were to judge a map on relative size or relative content, that's a, it's a stupid argument. Alpha Omega completely destroys the the purpose of Nuketown and makes it bland and annoying. Um, Alpha Omega is, to me, it's uninspired. It's generic. And it feels like a custom map. I gotta be honest. I've gotta be honest with you. Alpha Omega feels like a custom map. I'm just gonna say it. The boss fight is nothing to write home about. Yeah. I don't know. It's very bland. I'm going to say Alpha Omega is also D tier. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put that also in D tier. Yo. Powerless also just gifted two more subs to Soltron and Shaori. Thank you, dude. Powerless, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. I think it's going to put us 5 away from 13 1340. I appreciate it so much, man. Thank you, thank you. Dub Hero, my boy. My boy. Chat, we going crazy right now. Chat, we going crazy for the tier list right now. Dub Hero, thank you for the five gifted, buddy. He gifted uh, to Maniac, uh, Uwakwa, Nate, Bounty, and J-Ho. Thank you, brother. Chat, everybody spam some hearts for all the gifters in the stream right now. Put some hearts for everybody in the stream right now. Thank you, dude. Thank you so much. You guys have, you guys literally have no idea what that means. You don't have a clue. Chat, and now I'll rank the final map, Togger Toten. We'll get to that. Hold on. One second. We'll get to that in just a minute. But I want to rank Togger Tone as well. Togger Tone, kind of the same deal as Alpha Omega. However, it doesn't feel as generic. Togger Tone's got a cool style to it, you know? Um, it's, it's at least got that going for it. Togger Tone doesn't really have... It doesn't have the thing that makes it, like, stand out, you know? It's like you have Call of the Dead... And you have the new areas. It's like the boat area and then the, the like, laboratory. The laboratory in Togger Toten is literally one of the most forgettable places in all of Zombies. And it just feels underutilized. Um, 
What I will say is, I'm sure that's not the map exactly that Cherk had in mind, you know? Um, the experience of Dr. Toten playing through the Easter egg is, is, is pretty solid. Um... So it's it's fundamentally sound there, but it feels like it has a lot of wasted space to me. And a lot of also a lot of the steps in the Easter egg are just repeats on themselves. You do the same step about three or four times, and it just feels dumb. You know? Feels annoying. Attack hey, orb. You, 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 you. <laughs> Attack orb. Thank you for the two months, homie. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Welcome back, dude. Welcome back. How are you doing? Thank you so much for the thank, thank you for the reset, man. Thank you for the hype train, boys. Thank you for the hype train. Level two right now as well. That level two hype train. Thank you. Thank you, lads. Yeah. My final rating for Togger Toten would probably be B tier. It's not quite A tier, I don't think. Actually, maybe. It, it would for me, Togger Toten would fall between B and A. It would fall between B and A. But yeah. I think I think that would be it. That 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 is chat. That is my final map tier list. So yeah. I'm not telling you Dead of Night is the worst zombies map of all time. Again, these aren't ranked on order. These aren't ranked on order. Better rank it a. <laughs> Better rank it a. Yeah, I, I would say it's either it, it's like between A and B for me. I'm not really sure where to put it. If it's a good day, if it's if I'm having a good day, it's A tier. If I'm having a bad day, it's B tier. <laughs> Thank you so much, Powerless. I appreciate it a lot, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Um. So yeah, again, these are not ranked individually. These are just tier ranked. That would require a lot more thinking, but. And also, I don't think you can... I actually don't think you can do that. I don't think you can rank a map like Revelations and compare it to, like, Noct or something, you know? I just don't think it works that way. But these are just general tiers. So, yeah, that's my tier list, chat. We're going to go launch with some content now, boys. Y'all ready? Y'all ready, though? We're gonna we're gonna go lounge to uh, Pat's video real fast. Chat, we're gonna go ch check out the DE retrospective. Thank you for the level the level two hype train, though, guys. I really appreciate that, man. You guys have been awesome today. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I think I think we hit a uh, uh, thirteen. We're at thirteen forty two. Chat, we are eight away. We are eight away from uh from thirteen fifty. Thank you so much, guys. That would be. You guys don't have to do it, obviously, but that would be absolutely insane if we hit that goal before the end of the stream. You guys, again, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but that would be that'd be pretty cool. Um. So yeah, let me actually stop that recording and start a new one. 